Hi there, I'm Justin Pritchard, and if you're considering installing an electric vehicle charger at home or at work, then I thought I'd put this video together to show you some of the things that I've learned in the process of buying, installing, and using mine for the past couple of years. So with that, here's a look at my very basic, lowest possible cost home EV charging setup and what I learned along the way. And what I'm hoping to leave you with here is a sense of how this all works and looks and functions when it's tied into your electrical system and you start actually charging cars with it. When deciding on when to buy, think of the big sales like Christmas or Boxing Day. I bought the charger that I was considering during a Black Friday sale, and I hadn't planned on purchasing one for another few months, but at $300 off, it was a no-brainer. This is an entry-level charge point charger, and it cost around $700 shipped. It's a basic level 2, has a wall-mounted holder with a handy LED light that makes it easy to see in the dark. When deciding on which charger you'd like, be sure to keep cord length in mind. Many chargers are offered with standard and extended charging cord lengths. Consider the parking situation near your charger and the location of the charge port on the car or cars that you'll be charging. With all of that sorted, I called an electrician to assess the electrical system at my house and look at completing the install. On an initial visit, the electrician quickly checked over the fuse panel and nearby area to determine which parts he'd need to install the charger, and we figured out the best place to put it. From that point, I was provided an estimate for the work and we settled on a date. That initial electrician visit took less than 10 minutes, but note that my setup required a very basic installation. The household fuse panel here is mounted just inside of the exterior wall where the charger was going to be installed, so connecting the charger to its power source required just one hole to be drilled and a few feet of cable to be passed through. More complicated setups will be more expensive to install, but if your house is like mine, you can expect the install to be pretty affordable, in my case about $300. If it's extremely cold, the electrician might not be able to bend the wire as easily or at all. At 20 below, mine couldn't complete the installation and had to return on a warmer day. So if you're having your charger installed during the winter, scheduling the work for when it's a little warmer out could save your electrician an extra visit. You'll want to properly patch around the hole where the electrical cable passes through your wall, if applicable, and be sure to use caution if you'll pass the charging cable around the corner of a brick house which can wear the insulation down. And that's about all there is to it. Those are the only two concerns I'd mention. My charge point charger has never had a hiccup, and even after nearly two years out in the elements, it looks and feels nearly new, with all the finishes standing up nicely so far. I don't own an electric car or a plug-in hybrid, so I only use my EV charger on occasion when I'm reviewing a plug-in powered vehicle. I plug these in before bed in the evening, and in the morning I'm greeted with a charged battery and the cabin preheated to the temperature of my choosing if I like. Your home becomes your charging station. It's just like plugging in your phone and laptop before bed. Things charge up while you sleep, and the next morning they're ready for the day. So I just thought I would show you a little more detail on charging this aviator plug-in hybrid and sort of how that works uh, from where I'm sitting. So you can see here, time to fully charge, 3.2 hours on 240 volts and call it overnight on 120 volts. So here's what that looks like. Open up the little charge door, plug it in, and that's all there is to it. You lock the car up and walk away. So now it's the next day and I thought I would show you what this looks like with a full battery when you, uh, when you come back to it. So fully charged, 100% ready to drive and that's good for 32 kilometers uh, before I have to use any fuel and a combined range right now with a full battery and an almost full tank of gas, I can go about 505 kilometers.
Well, thank you for watching. My name is Justin Pritchard for Driving.ca. Don't forget to like and subscribe down below so you never miss a new upload. And we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.